Dr. Sella. Hi, Giselle. Anyway, uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, on behalf of Dr. Gisela Concepcion, uh, I'm sure uh, she's in, but maybe some uh, connectivity uh, issues. Uh, we will be, uh, you know, be joined by her in, in a while. Uh, so in the meantime, we would like to welcome everyone to this uh, another week of our Fireside Chat series for Paase. Uh, on Philippine, uh, you know, innovation. Okay, this, uh, Alvin. Yes, go ahead, uh, Giselle. I'm, I'm so sorry, everyone, um, for okay. having the connectivity problem. So I'll just say a few go words ahead. and then I'll... Uh, 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 sure. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. This is uh, Giselle Concepcion, and uh, we're um, uh, on Fridays. We have our um, guests who are... Um, model innovators that we would like to um well share with you and um today it's, it's very special because we have a uh, tandem or a duo and um and it's on a topic that is uh, very important in our country and this is on uh, agriculture so um uh, thank you everyone for joining and uh, I would now like to yield the floor to uh, Dr. Alvin Colaba, my co-host, who is um, a professor in uh, De La Salle University, former past president and current vice president of the National Academy of Science and Technology. Alvin, thank you. Thank you, Giselle. Of course, we know uh, Professor Emeritus Gisela Concepcion, uh, current uh, executive member of the National Innovation Council, uh, representing the scientific community. And uh, again, uh, uh, today we are uh, very much, uh, you know, excited to hear from two distinguished speakers who are into our discussion on uh, smart, uh, climate resilient agriculture for one health of people and planet. The first uh, speaker that we have is Ms. Vanessa Ying Lin, a CSO and COO of Agrigea Social Enterprise Limited, the Executive Director of the Resilient City Development Association and an A. Her degree acceleration program, Wharton Business School at the University of Pennsylvania, USA and graduated from National Donghua University in Taiwan. An acknowledged expert in brand strategy development, product design and development, marketing strategy and execution, social entrepreneurship, resources coordination, industry, academic collaboration and executive and exhibition planning and execution. She was the marketing and product manager of Agri Dragon Biotech Company Limited, and was the brand manager of the Pointic International Limited. Ladies and gentlemen, we have, uh, you know, Miss Vanessa Yinglin, but I would like now also to introduce our second speaker who will speak immediately after Vanessa, Mr. Mark Lawrence Cruz. He is the school director of the School for Exper Experiential and Entrepreneurial Development Incorporated of SID <laughs> Philippines a school system established by Gawad Kalinga Community Development Foundation, primarily to raise a new generation of agri, of agri entrepreneurs who will end poverty for themselves, families, and communities. He has been involved with GK since 2004, where he has been leading various programs for community building, zero hunger, and community enterprise development. He is also a lecturer at the Ateneo Graduate School of Government and is currently completing his doctorate in public administration at the UP National College of Public Administration and Governance. He completed his master's in philosophy and bachelor degree in management at Ateneo de Manila University. So again, let's welcome 
uh, with pleasure our distinguished speakers for this morning, Ms. Vanessa Yinglin and Mr. Lawrence, uh, Mark Lawrence Cruz. Uh, Vanessa, going to speak first. Thank you. Okay, good morning. Morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, okay. Uh, it's our. It's really a, my pleasure that can be invited by Gisela. We are very, very old friend. Um, okay, sorry. Okay, we are, we are very old friend. Um, Dr. Gisela have attended my farm from many times and also my wedding. <laughs> we are very familiar with each other. And that's also, I'm also very familiar with other friends in the Philippines. And what we would like to share this with you is, uh, we are very confident that we, our solution can solve the problem in Taiwan. And we can also solve some pro most of the problem in the Philippines in agriculture. So it's my pleasure to share with you. We have, um, our relationship between Aguga and the Philippines since many years ago. We, I have been to the Philippines many times, invited by UPSIPA, uh, by PSPA, and I also uh, by ADB. I have visited Las Banas, Baguio, uh, to for with Bangas State University. We also have accepted some many Chinese from Maspade in the mid, mid of the Philippines. And uh, we are also assist Macro Manila Economic and Culture Office to training the overseas foreign labor here in Taiwan, to uh, training them how to be an organic farmer. So when they go back, they can back to their hometown to be the seeds to, for, to grow uh, organic vegetables. And here in Taiwan, we are agriculture, we are a social enterprise. We not only cultiv uh, cultivate a very good uh, planet, or our herbals, and we also have the ability, we have a food processing factory, and our product is good enough to uh, get the Monda Selection Award, that's a top three product award in the world. We get the silver award for the hand cream, that is the extract from the rest of broccoli. And we also assist to support our hospital uh, nurses, uh, doctors to support the hand cream and uh, some nutrient during the COVID-19 epidemic times. Okay, that's our brief. So um, I would like to ask some of you, what would what do you do to make yourself stay in good health? You can give me some feedback, uh, some from the food. Exercise. Exercise, bingo, and some, I believe some will say a uh, daily routine. I get up early, as early as I eat on time. But if you do those three, can you really have the, to have, to make you stay in good health? I don't think so. If you don't consider about this, how about the air? How about the water? So I think that is a very important thing that you all, we also need to know. If you do the, all, you eat very good food, you do the exercise every day, we have that, I have very good daily routine arrangement, but if you drink a lot, heavy metal water, deeply air pollution, could you be healthy? I don't think so. So that's the reason why we believe um, if you need to have a good health, that it always combined that it only when the, Healthy soil can make, oh, let me get it. Okay, we start it again. If you want to have a healthy human body, you need to eat healthy food. If you want to eat healthy food, that need to have to come in from the healthy soil. So that's the reason why Agri Gaya, we put ourselves, uh, devote ourselves into how to make the soil and the environment is stay in a very good condition. So that then we can have a good body. Only when, when we make the environment is very safe and healthy, then we can have a positive circle feedback to our health. If not, if you really just be a, uh, just use the brown chemical or get everything, only have everything you want, not think about the feedback for the planet, for the soil, you cannot get a positive circle. Uh, I would like to share you, I believe some, most of you may know this already, but since this is our, this is from NASA, that is the CO2 
since 2006. Okay, see when the spring come, when we start to work again, you can see the carbon dioxide getting more and more. I will going to have two questions later. Oh, the April is true. Sorry. Okay, I have a question. Um, if you can answer the question, whenever you visit Taiwan, I will give you a very big surprise. Okay, could you, is, is there anyone can tell me why the carbon dioxide gets so few, getting fewer during June? Anyone? Anyone try? Do you know why? What was that again, uh, Vanessa? Uh, we can find that the carbon dioxide is getting more and more after the winter when we go back to work from our holidays, New Year holidays. But when it gets more and more, why it comes some different? Why it the, the carbon dioxide getting that few? You can see the screen that is that few in the, in June. Okay, that is because the trees in Northern Europe is getting leaf, it's blooming. So the, so the plants start to work. That's the reason why we can have few carbon dioxide because our planet assists us to clean the air. So that's also the reason why I want to share, we need to get the very good uh, balance and the positive feedback to our environment. So um, in the post epidemic area, we also know that, that we also know for the carbon dioxide for the climate change. And what we also know in the past epidemic area, we found the transportation for um, from product, food, fertilizer, and materials getting more and more difficult. The climate change and the challenge getting worse. I heard from my um, my first page of the training from Maspate, they told me they got a very serious heat stroke this year. That not happened in the past few years. And I also know the unstable production is getting more and more serious, not only in the Philippines, but also in Taiwan for some high value fruit veggies like a uh, cucumber, cherry tomato, uh, bell peppers, we start to face this kind of problem because this high value, high nutrient plants are very sensitive to the environment. So that will make our production more and more difficult. And on the other hand, although all the three factors that will lead to a result, food shortage, uh, food shortage nutrient insufficient, and we'll look hugely lower down our food sales if sufficient rate. So what we know we need to do is probably we need to think if we should make some local regional supply chain, that, is, that could be the first priority, no matter in Philippines, in Taiwan, in any other country. And the regional supported cultivation like um, community, community farm, community supported farm, that will get more and more important. And with this kind of production, we separate our farm in many regions. We need to implement some technology and application to make the management and the production um, sustainable, stable, and it can be controlled. 
And on the other hand, because the climate change, no, even we start to use very good agriculture things now, we still need to take um, at least 20, 10, 20 years to get lower down the temperature of the planet and the climate change will still hit us. So the facility and the cultivation plan will be also very important. So you agree, Gaia, what we do is we build an alliance in South and Asia. We can work together everywhere. Uh, start, we start with the food safety. Uh, we can save the water and energy. And also regional support, we can make, uh, make it like a satellite farm. In Agri Gaia, we can use our IoT and AIoT center management to assist all our fundamental where you are can be a uh, highly controlled here in Taiwan. And we can also in integrate the human resource management and incubation program to support how to use the machine and the technology. Now, I would like to share with you what Agri Gaia here. Um, that is a video from our greenhouse. You can see our uh, the greenhouse is a typhoon resistant. We can also resist the earthquake as well. We can apply some of the power plant application. Uh, and we have to do the uh, calculation if we only implement uh, around 10 to 15 square meters solar power panel, we can have a net zero here in our greenhouse. Okay. And uh, this greenhouse can assist us to uh, to reach the heat control. In uh, my farm is in Kaohsiung, Taiwan, in the southern part of Taiwan. And at the big, during the summer, it is very hot. You can see outside is 36 degrees. And inside the greenhouse is around 50. So if the, the greenhouse decides not to work, that will lead to that heat status. But after the the a uh, window on top of the roof and the end in, uh, design we work, make it work. It will lower it down to third, uh, third from, sorry, from 40 to 33 in 15 minutes. And that is also what we are working on the other technology we use is our, our patented underground irrigation system. That is just like uh, we do the under, irrigation and the fertilizer underground and through these horses. Uh, you can see those the, the is we drip drip the water out and the water will go to the root directly and when they absorb absorb from the root they will get the nutrient and the water at the same time and do it with the metabolism and the vaporization they will go out. So they will uh, assist them to do like a uh, Go to the dream. It's like a gym or a villa for the plants. So we can lay the transpiration more and, uh, and it can increase uh, with the increasing of transpiration. We can also lay the active components more and we can reduce the human humidity in the air. And also we can also reduce the disease at the same time. And so more important is we can save 70% of the water, 70% of irrigation waters. So this is how it works. We put those horses and the tubes underground. It's a biomimic uh, irrigation system that is inspired by our human vessels, just like, like our uh, pulmonary and our artery. And we do the underground. We view the soil as our human body. So we provide the water and the soil, just like our human vessels provide the uh, nutrient and the water to our human bodies. And yeah, after this construction, we'll put the soil on top of those house horses. And what we like to, uh, to share with you is why we focus on soil, not only from um, some um, AIoT that much. It is because um, soil is a very important and also the key issue that I just mentioned at the beginning. And not only from Agri-Gaia, you can see even AFAL many years ago, they emphasize that if you do the uh, really good agricultural way, we can assist to save the carbon dioxide back into the soil as a format of carbon glue. So the carbon glue can do very good to our, to our planet. That's where nutrient comes from. That is very important. So that's what we can do. We, not, we can reach 
uh, to use the good agriculture method can also assist to absorb some carbon dioxide. And with this design, we can not only keep the production, but also we can uh, higher the quality of the food. Like here in Taiwan, we cultivate the Chinese herbal, we call it danshan. Some people call it red, uh, red root sage, and also some call it salvia. And we can find in the standard of the Chinese farmers familia, that's the three. And in aggregate, we are three times higher compared to the standards. Not only because we are focused on the soil. So basically, if you can do very good to your soil, you can cultivate everything from broccoli, lettuce, cherry, tomato, uh, cabbage, or uh, if you want to uh, cultivate some of your native uh, herbal plants that could be also very helpful. And regarding to the mildew perform management, we, we like uh, in aggregate, we have a, a data center. We collect a lot of data since, uh, data from the climate effectors and also from any uh, data from our farm that feedback from our on-site manager. We use it like we have a dashboard and to check everything every day anywhere to see and to assist us to do the uh, very immediate how to, if, if there is any, to check every status, if there is, it's okay. Okay. So uh, we have a, a urban style, one health solution, and that also can be applied in any other cities to reach resilient city is the way what we are doing. Uh, we can put a greenhouse to against the typhoons and the climate change, the, some uh, weather hit us. And in the greenhouse, of course, this have to be a typhoon and ash pack resilience. And we can also put solar power, power plant on top of that or uh, nearby the greenhouse. Then we can reach net carbon dioxide emission. Of course, if we use our, our uh, underground irrigation system, we can save a lot of water to um, assist us to handle the drought problem. And on the, around, around the greenhouse, we can also put some healing garden like an edible landscaping. It is very uh, healing to uh, let everyone can have a very good mind and release the pressure. And also we can provide a lot of food for our neighborhood and can later, um, no matter what, community just can be a community supported farm for everyone to join the edible landscaping. And also the greenhouse can not only provide the food, no matter to supermarket, to campus, to company, to hotels, to restaurants, and also can provide the electricity to the neighborhood. Uh, like I just mentioned in agri our aggregate greenhouse, what we, the electricity requirements are really very low. So um, if we can put some more electricity, a solar power plant, a solar power panel in our greenhouse, we can have more electricity. So that's the reason why we can support the neighborhood. That would be very important if some typhoon or any disaster hit us. And also the electricity can be put for the uh, elect electric vehicles, motorcycles to deliver food, veggies, or any transportation services. That could be another solution to reduce the air pollution. So that can, um, can assist us to improve our city resilience. And uh, regarding to that, I just mentioned the technology, not only uh, the technology need to be considered, how to manage the human resources is also very important. So in our way, we also think um, the owner should be a city government because agriculture is a necessary industry, not for the leisure it is necessary. It's a basic of the life. So the owner should be, city government, city government would, be bad, would be better, but also could be others. But okay, so in our opinion, city government would be better. And the manager could be young people uh, I strongly suggested that could be graduated from um, Taiwan's the best epic university in our idea. 
and we can also assist train the, some foreign labor here in Taiwan and they can go back as a supervisor because they are more um, elder, more elder and can have a stable mind and emotion control. And regarding to the employee, I would strongly suggest we can have some students, citizens, or you know, any um, facility from the foundation that can join us. And with our irrigation system, that can be uh, because we lower down the uh, body load to doing agriculture. We use some uh, devices, we use the handhold uh, devices and other implements so we can uh, lower down the loading. Even, even we do the irrigation, we just open a valve, then we can do the whole farm underground irrigation. So you don't need to carry a lot of heavy things anymore, no matter to carry the water or to carry the fertilizers. So uh, that can lead the elder people or women that can also join in to do the agriculture as well. So if we can do that for our regional support, we can reduce a lot of food wasting. Uh, this is a very short video that I would like to share with you. Although we are, we have a lot of technology implement in our greenhouse. Why human resources and the um, business model uh, is a human oriented business model is very important. Um, Vanessa, there's no yes. sound. We do not. I don't hear the sound. I don't know about the rest. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Sound this is. is oh, okay, I would like a just a little. They have a test. They use the cucumber to lay the nose monkey to do the same work, but different feedback. The first one they. They provide the cucumber to the first monkey. It's get a rock. Okay. Yeah, we can get a piece of cucumber. And other one, do the same work. We they get a grape. So we also get the cucumber back. Okay, you can see the monkey's angry. Well, we do the same work, but I always only have the cucumber. Why other one can have the grape? So uh, why I use this video to share with you is, is because that is very important if you decided the, uh, the business model, the structure, how to manage the human resources is very important. They need to be under a very detailed and the fair arrangement so that, that, that can make everything sustainable. Okay, so for Agrigayo, what we do, uh, we can, uh, yes. Okay, I'll continue. Okay, well, so what we can, what we need to focus not only for the food product is the supply chain. And also we can pro provide healthy food. We also need to provide can some uh, stability to the, do some human empowerment. So our solution is to combine the SDGs 3, 14 and, uh, 3, 13 and the 17. So what we can do is to combine a very good environment to build a very, to cultivate a very good food and the later that every kind of people can find a place in this structure, in the environment to join the agriculture solution. 
So our relationship between the aggregate and the Philippine for now, we have a trend, trend the first page of the seeds training from the seed school. And they have to stay here. And also from uh, Quezon City University and the Quezon City government, they have been here for uh, 11 days. A six hour intensive training every day. You can see they do very good work to us from the cultivation details and all from light machine training that was also very important and how to build the underground irrigation system, how to develop a, the solution, the agricultural cultivation plan to against the drought and the typhoons and even from the pesticides and the diseases. And also we are, co we are going to cooperate with MACO. We have cooperated with MACO already, but for the next coming year, we are going to assist MACO to training 100 Filipino foreign labor here in Taiwan for basic organic agriculture training. So when they go back, they can be a very well-trained farmer to do the organic farming to provide very good food when they're back to their hometown. And also that we are just receiving CNN reported. I believe some of you have seen our report on CNN or ABCC being already. So that's our relationship. Why they are coming is because they, uh, uh, I believe Mark will share with you later because we have the similar air con uh, weather condition. So that's the reason why we can assist Philippines to improve uh, the technology ability to uh, solve your problem in a very short time. So this is what we do here in Taiwan. And that also a brief introduction for our cooperation between Agrigaya and the seed and the Gawa Kalinga. There is no sound, Van. Still no sound. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Okay, I will share the, the link for, to you later because I, I some of people, okay, many people tell me no sound here. Okay, so uh, this is what we are doing here in Taiwan and uh, looking forward to communicate with you later after Mark's speech. And uh, we sincerely invite you to stand with Agrigaya, to stand in the front line of sustainability like we just did. And we sincerely invite more to join us. Thank you. Thank you, Van, for that very inspiring um, sharing of uh, the uh, uh, values and the principles of Agrigaya. And I witnessed uh, you uh, begin uh, in the uh, Pingtung Agribiotech uh, SMT Park. And, and now you have your own farm outside Kaohsiung, and then you are moving to the Philippines. And everyone knows that we share so much with Taiwan in terms of uh, our vegetation, our crops, also our climate uh, uh, threats or hazards. We share the same typhoon. So I think that uh, having a um, seed academy in, in um, Kawad Kalinga, partner with you involving a university, Kazan University, is a, an ideal arrangement. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, Giselle, we may now proceed uh, first with uh, Mark's uh, presentation before we move on to our uh, questions. Okay. Thank you, ahead, you Dr. Alvin, uh, Vanessa. Thank you, Dr. Gisela. Thank you. Uh, good morning to everyone. My name is Uh So we are Seed Philippines. Uh, and uh, uh, today I'll share with you our own uh, what we do. Uh, Vanessa's already mentioned uh, the collaboration between Agrigaya and Seed Philippines. And uh, uh, share our own insights and ideas on how we might attain a more sustainable um, food systems, you know, build more sustainable food systems for our country. So we are Seed Philippines and uh, 
we are a school that was established uh, by uh, Gawad Kalinga. Um, Gawad Kalinga has been around for uh, 20 years, uh, doing its work most uh, known in the country for housing. But we've been doing a lot of programs also for zero hunger, uh, disaster relief, and uh, reconstruction, uh, and many other things. Uh, but in 2014, uh, Gawad Kalinga decided to establish uh, the School for Experiential and Entrepreneurial Development, or SEED Philippines, uh, which has evolved to become Gawad Kalinga's education-based solution to rural development. Um, when we started, we were initially responding to a number of uh, insights given by government. Number one, that the average age of the farmer back then was already... Uh, at 60 to 65, and that's already 10 years ago almost. So we are now looking at a scenario we're in. In the next five to 10 years, um, uh, the average age of the farmer would be around 80. And um, this is something that will uh, radically impact uh, the capacity of our country to feed itself. Number two, we all know that uh, not too many uh, people are going into agriculture, especially in the rural areas. Uh, many current farmers and their families think that there is no uh, sustainable wealth in agriculture. Agriculture is related to uh, uh, very little opportunities and the parents themselves are not encouraging their children. And yet, and yet as Vanessa pointed out, uh, food... Um, is something that's always there and it's food is something we need every day. Um, when you ask the poor, there's no money, but when you ask all the major companies in the Philippines and major institutions, um, all of them have stakes in agriculture. And um, we know from the family income expenditure survey of the country that around 40 to 60% of uh, families' income, whether you are poor or rich, is actually spent on food. So there is a gap. There is a gap that needs to be... Uh, uh, bridge. Um, and finally, um, being a mission unit of GK, we realized that uh, uh, an overwhelming majority of the families we have helped over the past 20 years are actually agricultural families or uh, families of fishermen or, or, or fishermen or families of foresters. Basically, 70% of the population that uh, Gawad Kaling has been helping are actually uh, families reliant on agriculture. So if we are to achieve our bold dream of ending poverty, we must make an impact, positive impact, radical innovation in the field of agriculture. So it is in that context that GK uh, collaborated with the, the, the TESDA to give birth to Seed Philippines. Um, its mission and vision is uh, anchored on the overarching goal of GK to achieve zero poverty. Um, and our particular mission is really to focus on the young poor, to bring back the interest to the young poor, to bring back much-needed capacities, and above all, much-needed opportunities, economic opportunities, sustainable economic opportunities for the young poor. Um, and by doing so, we hope that they will end poverty for themselves, their families, their communities, and eventually provide our country with that lift from the bottom uh, that we very much need. So how do we accomplish this uh, vision and uh, uh, mission? Um, currently, we are implementing a three-month program. So we are at the a school, um, and we are implementing what we have come to call the test the plus curriculum. Whatever test the requires uh, of us, we implement, but we add on to it. We do a plus. And what's the what are some of the pluses that we add on to the test the curriculum? Number one, we bring in a lot of character uh, development, values uh, discussion, leadership formation, uh, in addition to the competencies uh, of TESDA. Because we believe that competency and character, when they go together, they produce a powerful uh, combination that will actually be the formula that will be a um, uh, big determinant of success. Skill alone cannot make you succeed. Character alone. But together, but together um, it forms a potent uh, 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 weapon to really prepare the young people to get out of poverty. And when it comes to agriculture, um, we have been stressing this idea that 
most of our discussions on agriculture focus on the inputs, the technologies, the science. And, and that is very important. But very few people talk about the culture in agriculture, the waking up early, the, the, the discipline to... Um, uh, Uh, do pest management the the care to do soil management um, the creativity to pursue innovation, character traits. And so, um, actually, provide a venue, a, a, a design venue where the students can actually implement worlds that they are capable, that they can do something. Because it's very important to allow the young poor uh, a vehicle to prove to themselves that they can make a big difference. And for us, because this, this agriculture, um, the students build a community food farm. So after their, uh, within the three months, the first month is spent doing an intensive in-campus live-in uh, program. They go from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. every day for four weeks. It's a boot camp format where they earn their certificate in, from TESDA, but also they do a boot camp with GK. Um, after that, they return to their communities to actually build a food farm that will provide simply lang po leafy greens for their community. While it may sound simple um, from, a, from a productivity perspective, but it means a lot for families who struggle with food and nutrition. So these community food farms are, are for the students, proof of concept that they can do something. But for the community, these are vehicles for food augmentation, nutrition augmentation, and in most cases, when there is, and there will always be surplus harvest, some form of income augmentation. And so our idea is when students go through this three-month program, it is short enough that they can do this in between uh, uh, grade 12 and before they go to college. Some even do this uh, in between their summers. Some do this in between their jobs. We target 18 to 20-year-olds. Um, it's short enough that they can accomplish it in a manageable time. But it is also intensive enough to actually be, uh, to introduce a, um, uh, an inflection point in their trajectory uh, as a, in their life journey. And so we intentionally really form them to become not just students of agriculture, but agri-youth leaders. So um, since 2014, we have graduated 537 graduates uh, from almost half of the provinces all over the country, from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. And we're happy that we are still maintaining a very uh, impressive, the students have been maintaining an impressive 100% passing rate in their TESDA national assessment. We have since built five campuses. In, uh, the first campus was in Bulacan, uh, then in Bicol, and Camarines Norte. In Leyte, we are in, uh, in besides, we're in Leyte, in Dulag. In Bukidnon, we are in Malaybalay, and in Davao, we are in Davao City. And one of the things we're most proud of, 88% of our graduates are actually productively engaged after their three-month program, which means either they are employed, they, are, they have established their enterprises, or and this is really something that um, affirmed us that we were on the right path. A good number of them have pursued four-year courses in agriculture. They started applying to the state colleges and universities. Some of them have pursued other trainings in TESDA for specialized trainings in dairy, in horticulture. But we were so happy that we were seeing a trend of young people really getting interested in agriculture. And many of them getting employed at such a young age um, and are able to secure uh, employment that provide easily double of what their parents are currently earning. Most of the families that we uh, have encountered, their parents earn anywhere from five to 7,000 a month. 
um, our students that are em employed, their average salary is anywhere from 10 to 15,000 a month. So that's already double of their, their parents' salary, but it impacts the overall uh, status of the family. And so we're very happy that they have the skills, the character, and the opportunities. Part of the job of Seed Philippines at Gawad Kalinga is opening opportunities. So we talk to uh, groups like Agrigaya. Uh, we're piloting these uh, um, uh, technologies from Taiwan, and which will generate employment for our graduates. We are also talking to big industry players like San Miguel, Century Pacific Group, uh, La Familia Group, all of them in search of labor, in search of manpower in agriculture. And yet there is a dearth of people who want to apply for it. So we, we create those bridges. The poor cannot, the, it will be very difficult for the poor to end poverty on their own. But they can make this happen. The role of the non-poor is to create enabling environments, is to create bridges so, so, so that the poor, when they decide to really get out of poverty, then there is a path on which they can journey. Because the odds are stacked against them. Um, number one, they are economically already in deficit. Number two, many of them live in areas that are the most climate uh, uh, disaster risk prone areas. Uh, number three, the economic systems around agriculture are built on credit and uh, on loans. So they can never ex uh, exit the loan structure. The poor are born with loans. And so if that are the odds stacked against you, it is really very difficult. So the role of the non-poor is to dismantle some of these things so that it will become, so that we unburden the poor, so that they can journey out of poverty faster and better. Um, this is one story that we, we uh, are featuring. Monrea was a graduate of our three-month program. She's from Bulacan. She's never been out of Bulacan. It's her first time in agriculture. And yet she was hired as a community farm uh, organizer. And we deployed her to Marawi. Uh, in just one year, she has built from three farms to five farms, engaged and trained 300 mothers to 500 mothers as part of Gawad Kalinga's uh, rehabilitation efforts in Marawi. Um, and this is a 22-year-old who is leading the effort of community food farming for 800 families in Marawi City alone. And so we're really very impressed at what Monreya can do. And Monreya represents so many of her batchmates, so many of the 500 graduates that we have actually that have actually undergone our program. And so the community food farms stand as a testament, the living, breathing, tangible proof that we can make this happen. So it is also our avenue for ending hunger for Filipino families. So the past year alone, we have built 89 farms all over the country. These are small 200 to 500 square meters farms. Um, collectively, they have harvested four tons, not a lot in terms of commercial value, but divided across just 89 uh, farms. That means a lot for already their, their food augmentation. And uh, beyond that, these farms collectively have earned 300,000 uh, that add to the family's uh, food and other cash needs. So this is what the, the seed school system has been doing. We recruit these young people, put them in this ecosystem. We build the ecosystem, build these farms so that the young poor will have a launch pad for which they can really show themselves, their families, and our community what they can do. And so emboldened by these milestones, we have decided really to establish a seed all over the country, following the, the framework of GK being present all over the country. And we uh, just finished our board meeting yesterday where we approved to finally aggressively build the seed school system, where we want to build a thriving seed campus in every region. We're already present in um, five regions of the country, so 12 more to go. Um, and so for our 2030 goals, in line with the SDGs, we want to be graduating at least 100 per campus annually. Uh, we hope to build one seed campus per region and build 100 community food farms per year. Um, it will be a belief in GK that uh, it is the poor who will end their own poverty. 
um, they are the ones who will end their own poverty. And being such a young demographic of our country, um, uh, it is said that by the year 2030 or 2040, we would be the youngest demographic in the world. Um, but this young demographic would be an empty statistic if we will not capacitate them today. So the battleground to win that and make use of that demographic is today. And so GK's uh, social commitment is to keep on looking for these young people, put them in our environment, and put them on this trajectory, on this glide path towards success. And uh, uh, as part of our efforts, we are also opening and creating bigger worlds for them. Uh, that's why we are connecting and we're very happy to have been connected with Vanessa where we are discovering and learning from them because um, the food security of Taiwan, um, although they're such a small country compared to us, is so much higher than us. And so we want to learn from them. And they have shared with us things that actually work better for us compared to other technologies that we have been benchmarking against. We've been benchmarking in Israel, learning from Israel, learning from South Korea. And it's great that we're learning from them. But it's, it is now high time that we learn from our closest uh, neighbor um, and build regional cooperation. Because it's not, when we talk about climate um, uh, resilience, we cannot talk about borders. We need to talk about entire regions. And so as neighbors, we are also building this re regional cooperation with, with, with Taiwan uh, in order to really uh, strengthen the resilience of uh, uh, our, our food systems and technologies. Um, and in closing, we talk about sustainability, a, a lot of discussions on sustainability. And I'd like to share with you the perspective of Seed and GK. Um, there are a lot of elements of sustainability, but for Gawad, Kalinga, and Seed, um, our key to sustainability are the hopes and dreams of the young poor. So long as the young poor are dreaming big and dreaming high, so long as that desire for a better life is there, we have a nuclear source of energy to sustain all our efforts so that we have an engine that will drive us from one innovation to the next, from one failure to success, because it is those dreams that are worth living for, though it is those dreams that are worth innovating for, and it is those dreams that we should all be working for because those dreams represent majority of our people. Whether we like it or not, in our small worlds, in our schools, in our this crowd alone, we are the minority of this country. The majority of our country are poor or are struggling to get out of poverty. And it is that problem that we need to address because if that problem is addressed, then our entire country will rise. And so that is for us a key element in sustainability. The enduring, thriving uh, hope of the young poor for a better life. So that is for us in Seed Philippines. And we're very happy to be part of this conversation with uh, Paase. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Mark. It's fantastic. So um, we've uh, communicated in different ways. You were not able to join us in Parawi uh, last February when I went with Father Ben and met Monrea. Okay, your uh, top uh, trainer uh, in seed. And after Marawi, she I think she's going to Cotabato for training. Uh, so um, it's uh, something that I'm very, very uh, proud of, uh, having been part of the Ateneo team that went to Marawi to feed the school children in the public schools. And this is part of Father Ben Nebras' uh, program on uh, school feeding. And because uh, of the poverty and the hunger, there is undernutrition and malnutrition, which results in physical and mental disabilities of our children. And that is why together, they work to pass the uh, law on uh, school feeding uh, of children. Is that right, Mark? So thank you so much for your sharing. And um, it's really a wonder how you have connected with Vanessa, whom I've known in the last eight years. And now I know it's because you're an NCPOG <laughs> student, PhD student, and the key connector is Alex Brillantes of the NCPOG, whom I've been uh, connecting with uh, recently, whom I have known for some time as well. So thank you for- um, Dr. Dr. Stella, in, uh, Alex Brillant, Dr. Alex Brillantes is the current chairman of Seed Philippines. That's right. And uh, he's with NC Pag. So, uh, well, he's, he's very, very inspiring uh, 
uh, just like you. So um, uh, recently we were together in the um, um, the um, <clears throat> event uh, that was hosted by Professor Wu for the uh, 30 uh, uh, man delegation of the Linhai Industrial um, Park, Echo Park, and Alex and uh, uh, former Dean Fe were there. So anyway, I'd like to start off uh, with uh, some questions uh, to Vanessa regarding your um, technology. And then we'll uh, just move on uh, to uh, Mark later and Alvin can ask some questions. So Vanessa, in the Philippines, uh, many uh, uh, investors, farming investors, were uh, into the Israeli technology for decades. And there are some farms that were using this uh, uh, greenhouse technology of Israel, say in Tagaytay farms. Can you please uh, tell us what's the difference or what are the similarities between your technology and Israel's technology? Mm -hmm. Okay, Israel, uh, we have communicated with them for many years before. Uh, I think our communication is since the first year of Agrigaya. So it is um, nine years ago. And uh, Israel is very good at um, drip irrigation to make a very efficient use of the water because they are in the desert. They have very limited water. So um, the irrigation is uh, on the surface. Their irrigation system, what different, uh, I think we can separate into three dimensions, the indicator. The first one is irrigation. The second one is the facility. Uh, the greenhouse and the, the third one we can discuss about the sensors okay so that is a smart culture that we always discuss those two factors for the first one the irrigation system what we have is underground that is that it is surface other guy we have is the underground irrigation system and the, the is the real they are the drip irrigation is on the surface of the irrigation Although we can, they can do the very precisely irrigation way, they still uh, have some, a little bit water west because of evaporation. And on the other hand, they are very picky because they are very precise. So precisely irrigation. So um, they are very picky to the quality of the water. So if you use the natural water, um, that may need a little cost to build. You need to prepare another machine to make the water uh, do some treatment before you do the irrigation. And for now, the irrigation, the drip irrigation cannot, still cannot to do the uh, fertilizer, provide the fertilizer at the same time. But for us, we are underground irrigation. We can receive, uh, we can support any kind of the water and also can put the fertilizer, liquid fertilizer at the same time. So that's the first difference. And the second one is regarding to the facility. Uh, the greenhouse, the facility is designed. What is um, What kind of the uh, challenge you need to face? In Israel, they are against the, the desert, against the sand, but they are not good at to against the heavy rain. They have no rain. So, uh, but for us, we have heavy rain in a very limited time. They don't have typhoons, so they don't have that strong wind, but we here we have. So if you want, depends on what you need. If you, the facility is designed to protect our crops. So uh, if your challenge here is for the humidity or for the wind and the heat, then you need agri-gaya solution or other in uh, tropical regions solution. But if you are going to keep them warm, keep it, keep the humidity, then you might need is a real solution. So that's the difference. And the final one is regarding to the sensor. I have to say, is the real really do very good in the sensor and the AIoT devices, but because they are very good in IT industry and AI industry. Uh, we have some cooperate with the Israel data here right now, which always choose the best in the world to put that into our farm. So those are three different that between Agrigaya and the Israel solution. Thank you so much, Vanessa. And uh, I uh, recall that your, um, uh, your curved um, blood vessels uh, for irrigation, are they made of rubber? What is the material and how um, well uh, do they uh, like deteriorate? Do you have to replace them uh, once in a while? 
Oh, uh, that is uh, that is made up. That is made by rubber, made by re uh, recycled tire. That's and that's made by recycled tire. Of course, with some treatment, of course. And the the, the intensity and the the, uh, the pressure is. It's kind of commercial secret. It's our patented designs. And with this irrigation system, the rubber, what rubber afraid the most? The UV light. But we put that on the ground. So basically, they will not never make the UV light. So that basically can have a sustainable use forever, forever, until if someone dig it, dig it, or some, we would do only when we broke it. But in the natural system, that can be used more than 10 years, I think that for sure, but because in aggregate, the oldest now is more than 15 years already, still yes. working. So I have seen your uh, video a few times, Vanessa, uh, Sadi, yes. with the audio today, but uh, you also uh, talk about your secret uh, formulation of your fertilizer, but you mentioned that it is um, actually fermented um, plant material as well. Okay, so uh, that's yeah. another of your secret technologies, right? So anyway, uh, everybody, I'd like to uh, congratulate uh, Vanessa for um, all the technologies uh, that she's developed with her husband, who's an agricultural biotechnologist, Shang La. I hope uh, he's also listening in. I'd like to recognize the presence of our state universities and colleges, our partners in PASE, EVSU, URS, TIP, and Bataan Peninsula State University, thank you so much for being here because there are ways to um, well uh, spread the word around and uh, have a multiplier effect just by listening to Vanessa and Mark today. So at this point, Vanessa, I'd like to uh, yield the floor to Alvin. He may have some questions uh, for you and also for Mark. And then uh, later we'll open the floor to our uh, participants. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank you, Giselle. So we're very much uh, inspired and impressed by the two presentations, experiences of, of Agrigea, uh, you know, and of course the, the seed uh, Philippines. Uh, I would like to ask this question to Mark. No? Mark, uh, I'm sure when, when your graduates venture into agri entrepreneurship, uh, this particular area of business is highly technical. Um, so how do you sustain the, you know, the technical requirements and guidance of, of these young or not so young graduates of, of your seed program? And second, what, uh, I mean, how do they access uh, capital uh, funding? Uh, you know, what, what, what partnerships, uh, you know, have you uh, built uh, along with, you know, uh, funding agencies? or banks, uh, you know, to allow micro or this, the small business entrepreneurs to start their, uh, their, their businesses. Or, so there are two things, uh, fine, uh, the technical uh, side and the finance side. Can you enlighten us uh, with that? So on Thank the technical you, side, um, uh, uh, there is no lack of uh, opportunities for technical training for them, either from us, from government, from industry, from state colleges and universities. Like for example, these advanced uh, technologies in, agri in smart agriculture provided by Agrigaya. We sent six of our young mentors to uh, be trained by Agrigaya. What we have seen, Alvin, as a more important, uh, more pressing issue for sustainability is actually mentoring them beyond disappointment. Because that is an, an area where when the poor get disappointed, they get disheartened and they want to give up and just take the easy path, you know, uh, and say, you know, this was a mistake. I just should have just gone back to what we are used to doing, manual labor, whatever uh, job is there. That, that, that's not bad. I'm not saying that's bad. But if we are to put them on the path of uh, agro-entrepreneurship, which is actually a lot of risk-taking, our most crucial intervention for them post-graduation is not so much technical but the mentoring in terms of just really encouraging them and opening more opportunities and doing problem solving with them. So that's how we sustain them. Number two, financing. Um, there has never been a lack of financing. In fact, TESDA alone cannot uh, consume the budgets allocated to the various LGUs and regions 
Um, VA alone um, has been wanting to forget, provide grants. Uh, just last week, uh, six of our students won in the Young Farmers Challenge in Davao. Uh, besting students from state colleges and universities. Um, and so uh, there are microfinance institutions, there are cooperatives, there are so, so there's, there's, there's a lot of financing. What would be more scarce are actually opening access to opportunities. For example, uh, the supply of cassava and corn to the feed mills and to the uh, big buyers. Those markets are cornered already by big traders. The poor uh, are are very are, are not part of that equation. They do not gain too much from that. In fact, in that equation, they work the most but receive the least. So, Alvin, what we have been doing is shortening those supply chains so that the poor actually gain more. So, more than capital, they need shorter paths to market. That's number one. More than technical skills. So technical skills, many are also providing it. What the young poor need are mentors who will actually encourage them and journey with them through life because that, that kind of intervention is where we actually go head on with the ugliness of poverty, the messiness of poverty, the mindset of poverty. That's the most difficult thing to dismantle. But the poor, the, the young poor, they're very... They, they can absorb, they, they can learn so much. I mean, many of the people we sent to, to, to Taiwan, it's their first time encountering these technologies. And um, uh, Vanessa can tell you that they did very well in the training. Uh, they did their charts, they did their reports, they did very well and no prior experience with that. And yet, and yet they can make it happen. Okay, thank you, Mark. So my understanding is SEED has a team of mentors you know, that would, uh, you know, handle this big uh, number of your uh, post uh, graduates in the program. So excellent. Uh, so thank you very much. And I hope that indeed SEED uh, facilitates, uh, you know, access to this easy access, I would say, that we, we are aware that there are programs of test, the uh, DA, you know, but I think the even more important uh, problem there is, are this easily accessible? The bureaucracy of accessing it, the time, you know, I think is another matter. But I, I trust, uh, you know, uh, Seed, uh, GK Seed is, uh, you know, uh, is able to facilitate that uh, for these uh, people who are really wanting, uh, you know, to be agri entrepreneurs, especially, you know, uh, for our poorer, you know, uh, population. So thank you very much, uh, Mark. Uh, I would not have a question now for, for Vanessa, but we have uh, people here who have actually raised their hand. I've seen uh, Al uh, Gladys earlier, and of course, uh, Dr. Uh, Silverio Cabellon. Uh, Dr. Serafica? Yeah, thank you, Alvin. Sorry, I need to leave in 10 minutes. I have a, a 10 a.m. Uh, another meeting. But first of all, I'd like to thank both Vanessa and Mark for being able to actually create the models that are already on the ground running and getting data and information. So this is the type of project that we wanted to support. I've been back in the Philippines for the last 10 years and I've been helping the tech transfer and economic uh, and, uh, and uh, entrepreneurship sector. Definitely the agricultural sector indeed needs the most intervention. Alvin and I were in Davao for Nadal and again the all last year to look at the ecosystems of agriculture for rural agri development. And part of our mandate or our support is wanting to incorporate industry 4.0, the pretty much the activities that Agri Gaya Vanessa is doing already, some of the instructions. I was in Israel in 2019 to look at their technologies there and really needing to download. But indeed, more than anything else, it's not just the technology. It's the people that is the most important. Their education, their learning, even their personal entrepreneurial competencies needs to be addressed. I'm so happy to see this already there in terms of being able to do that. And I think uh, right now we're developing functional and enabling competencies for advanced manufacturing, uh, both for semiconductor, pharma, and everybody else. But Agri is the most important to me. So I would look forward to working with you uh, in the next couple of months and years, I guess, uh, because it will take some time. Uh, I work in the National Academy with Father Ben on Hunger Project before with 
Century Pacific, we have yet to hit the ground on that one. And this might be the, the actual entrance to, towards that. I mean, uh, definitely advanced manufacturing in food, uh, which again, Century Pacific whole group was willing to support and uh, needs to have a detailed uh, plan in terms of how it would increase productivity across the regions. And I think, uh, Mark, we need to craft that proposal for them, uh, for you. Uh, re really, I'm just all about teaching teachers, train the trainers. We did that for tech transfer for i uh from the U.S. for the last five years. And now I think uh, it's even more that the Taiwan group has been very aggressive, thanks to Giselle, having shepherded the, uh, the whole uh, Taiwanese delegation for the last 10 years ever since. I've seen her in uh, BPAA of UP. <laughs> so uh, uh, definitely, uh, I think it's bearing fruits now, Giselle. Congratulations for that. And hopefully we can have the impact sooner rather than later. So, but uh, it's just commendation right now. Thank you very much. But I look forward to uh, talking to you again, either through Paase and beyond. So thank you and good luck. <laughs> Thank you so much, Al. That's very, very encouraging uh, to hear that from you because Al is well connected with uh, uh, big private sector investors. So uh, in connection with that, maybe I should ask Van, Vanessa and Mark, how profitable would this uh, smart greenhouse be? Because I know uh, Van and uh, Mark dream of having our young people become farmers. So there is always this economic incentive that would uh, bring them out of poverty. It's true. Farmers still earn 5,000 pesos a month, especially the coconut farmers. Of course, hindi naman pang greenhouse yon, no? But anyway, there are other high value crops that are suitable for this smart greenhouse. May we ask um, Van, Vanessa, to uh, reply to the question? Okay, um, of course, it, uh, re when we're regarding to the ROI return on investment, we can divide it into two aspects. The first one is what kind of plants you are going to cultivate. Of course, as uh, Gisela just mentioned, if you cultivate the high value crops like uh, maybe, maybe um, asparagus, strawberries, um, broccoli, cherry tomato or herbs, Chinese herbs, of course, that you return on investment here um, in Taiwan, in Taiwan, if you cultivated the herbal, uh, Chinese herbal plants, cherry tomato, uh, for our single module of the greenhouse that can get the break even point at the fifth years, the fifth years. But when we were in regarding to, if we also including some food processing, like a fermented juice drink, we are really very good at, uh, we can shorten the, the break even point shorten to a uh, one and a half or two year. Fantastic. So Vanessa, let me uh, try her three flavors of a uh, fermented fruit drink, vegetable drink that is as um, well um, oh. satisfying as Coca-Cola. And then, but uh, it, uh, yeah. do you like that? Yeah. <laughs> like a drink of Coke. <laughs> carbonated. It's carbonated. So uh, there's a lot of opportunities to develop uh, uh, products uh, down the line. Anyway, um, I'd like to tell Mark that uh, there is another group that probably could help uh, Gawad Kalinga and Seed. And uh, we have actually had um, them as guests together with Father Ben Nebres, who is an honorary member of the PASE. And uh, this is Mercy Abad of Ahon Sahira. Uh, incorporated. And uh, these are um, uh, nanais who are mostly farmers. And the way uh, Mercy does it is she has groups of five women um, that um, her project development officers guide in terms of uh, character development and Christian values. And uh, the way uh, they do it is, you know, kung kailangan ng konting Paluagan because uh, one is uh, suffering some economic um, uh, challenges, then the others can help. But um, they have guidance from project development officers. I'm sure you have that also in GK. Now, what's the other feature of ASHI? It's microfinancing. Uh, they have a 1 billion peso credit line from the land bank. And the nanais are able to um, 
um, borrow 5,000 pesos. And if they do well, then uh, then they get to borrow 20,000 and then 50,000 and 100,000. So this has been working for a long time already. It was developed actually uh, based on this um, um, model. I think, is, is, it, is it in um, Sri Lanka? Uh, this uh, Nobel uh, Prize uh, winning uh, model for uh, social entrepreneurship. And now uh, the third thing that uh, Ashi does is to connect uh, the Manai farmers with uh, corporate buyers. So they're directly connected with the Jollibee Foundation or the Jollibee Food Corporation. So uh, Ashi Nanais are able to sell, say their turmeric or their uh, green lettuce, their uh, leaf lettuce to the Jollibee group and to the Mang Inasal group. Anyway, I'd also like to uh, acknowledge the presence of uh, Ran Kihano of Agritectura. He's going to be one of our speakers in December. So we'll hear from another agri-technologist uh, next month. Alvin, yes. there are other. Yeah, we have, have Dr. Dr. Uh, Cabellon. Uh, sir, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Colaba. First of all, I have, to, I, I have to express my admiration to uh, Gawad Kalinga. Uh, my fraternity did uh, contribute some housing in Diliman, now I see that you're training the farmers in the future. And I would like to, to express my admiration for Taiwan. My goodness, they're producing their own submarines and are able to produce their own submarines to defend themselves. But my question is on rice. Rice the staple of Southeast Asia. As you know, that is an economic uh, topic in the Philippines where rice should be at 45 uh, pesos a kilo. And then you hear that there's importation of rice of the Philippines and Malaysia is importing rice and India does not want to export its rice. So on this uh, climate change and resiliency and on food security, is there technology really that can be produced where rice, the stable food of maybe one half of the world can be developed and, and we just not are paying attention to, uh, I, I hate to use the comments of, you know, herbals, little this, little that, but should we address our technology to the needs of one half of the people of the world? So I pose that question to uh, Dr. Vanessa. Okay, thank you. Uh, what I didn't mention is with our technology, we can increase the production one, uh, one to one and a half or even two times higher compared to organic cultivation, even in rice. Rice is the, actually for us, uh, rice is the simple crops here in Taiwan, but because of, maybe because of the weather. So so we are really very good at the rice. And uh, with our regards to our rice, our rice is in Taidong in the uh, east, uh, east south area of Taiwan. But um, our species is a little bit different compared to the Philippine and Southeast Asia. Our rice species is more similar to Japan because we are just, you know, in the past, in the history, we are managed by Japan for a while. So our specialist is more close to Japan, but for the rice, not only for the rice, but also can apply to other plants in our studies and experience. Um, how to assist any crops against, uh, to, against their uh, climate change is to, will be two kind of, uh, two indicator. The first one would be heat control how to assist them to have the ability to against the state control. You need to arouse their ability and their mind 
you know the plant actually ha can have the mind and their hormones. So how to arouse them to against, to make them stronger, just like to arouse our immune system. So in our, our ways, no matter what kind of plant, if you don't use aggregate solution, you can try your solution, but the purpose is to lay them healthy more. So oh, no matter from the water, from the nutrient, uh, syrup, the recipe or anything, just make them healthier. So the, uh, the key point would not only no longer to the nitrogen, nitrogen side, um, potential that will regard, please kind of regarding to the details of the minerals. The secret and the detail will be hiding in the minerals control and the, the uh, water management. So if you can do that better, you can assist those uh, to perform well. In our experience in the rice and the dragon fruit and the sweet apples that we are not cultivated in the greenhouse, that is outside the traditional green traditional farms. And also in our uh, for our rice farm, we only use our fertilizer. We didn't use the underground irrigation system. But with the syrupy and the, what we provide, the good nutrient in the right time, we can assist them to have a very strong body. So even we just suffer from few typhoons these years. Other farms, the, the rice are collapsed. You know, the rice always collapse after typhoon hits. But for Agrigaya, what we lose is only 40% compared to our neighbors. Why we can do that is what late we laid the crops getting stronger by themselves. If you don't, if we don't use facility, that is the way we need to help them. So Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Billy Cabellon, thank you for that question. There is no one easy solution to our uh, rice problem, as we know. And uh, actually, <laughs> our um, Philippine Rice Research Institute had all kinds of research uh, that's uh, genetics based to uh, come up <laughs> with variety that are, um, uh, you know, um, would allow rice to uh, withstand um, less water and also uh, to be resistant to uh, say the Tungo virus and also um, to be salt resistant. So there's a lot of good researchers uh, in uh, P, uh, P uh, Philippine Rice Research Institute and the ERI. And you're right, we have not benefited from uh, this in a great way. Although we are told that our rice farmers are actually among the most uh, productive uh, in, uh, in the world, according to Dr. Willie Padolina, who was with the ERI for many years. But uh, climate change is a different and altogether different um, major factor for our rice farmers. So I haven't heard the latest on uh, the rice uh, price caps and whether it's true that um, now in October, we have the peak of the rice uh, uh, production in our country and therefore uh, the price of rice in the markets has already gone down. I don't know, maybe uh, somebody has some news uh, to share with us this morning. Looks thank like no the, one- uh, Thank you for the answer. Yes, thank you. So, um, we have other comments, uh, Alvin, from the chat. We uh, uh, see any yes. comments, uh, Giselle, and I know it's already uh, a minute past uh, the hour of 10. So I yes. think uh, uh, we're good, if, you know, but, but I know uh, that some institutions have or, uh, co are communicating directly to Mark. I hope, Mark, you would uh, accommodate their their uh, you know inquiries you know I think they have some interest to partner with you so uh, we'd like to see more of your of your seed uh, you know institutions uh, actually uh, uh, set up across the Philippines so and I thank you very much and I'm happy that you have one in Leyte because I'm from Tacloban Mark so I really have a lot of empathy to to that province and uh, certainly you know, we are doing also a number of things uh, there. And I think with the partnership of uh, SEED and uh, Vanessa's uh, organization, I think we can do uh, even better, uh, you know, the initiatives in, in Leyte. And, and of course, we can replicate that to the rest uh, of the country. So 
Now, this is really one of our advocacies, uh, you know, that we are really looking at. So uh, anyway, uh, Giselle, do you have any yeah. other? Yes, I just read out the uh, comments of our vice president and president uh, elect to take office or chum office in uh, no in January. Gladys Completo of UP Los Baños. Congratulations, Vanessa and Mark, for power. Giselle and I work on a project developing a nutrient bar. It's actually Moringa or Malungay nutrient bar. And we said that we would pass this on to uh, Father Ben, uh, Ateneo, and Gawad Kalinga for your uh, food um, uh, feeding program. And so once we are done and we actually Actually, have a prototype. Uh, uh, and let the GK children try them. Okay, so um, that's uh, from uh, Gladys, and then from um, Al. I think this is important. You probably know that um, uh, the USAID uh, has a four million dollar grant for training in advanced manufacturing, and we know that we are. Uh, Chief of Party of the USAID uh, Stride. It's no longer called Stride. I think it's upscale. Mark is uh, Richard Abendan, who is a graduate of the Ateneo. So I think we should uh, connect with him okay, for uh, this kind of agri-based uh, uh, advanced uh, manufacturing training. Anyway, I think that the, at this point, we'll have to end uh, our um, fireside chat soon. It's really been a very, very inspiring uh, morning. And... Um, this is an example of social uh, enterprise, techno enterprise, and social innovation we have learned is at the heart or the root of um, what we would foresee as um, um, inclusive uh, growth and development in our country. We can have any or all kinds of uh, techno uh, innovations, but if you do not focus it on uh, the um, involvement and the development of the communities, then these uh, techno innovations will not really take root. So I would like to thank our guests today, Vanessa and uh, Mark for sharing your thoughts, your experiences, your expertise, your um, early wins, your early um, well uh, accomplishments uh, that uh, tell us all that the best is yet to come. And I understand that aside from Quezon City University, with support from Mayor Joy Belmonte, aside from QC, there is Valenzuela uh, uh, that uh, will also embrace this um, Agrigaya uh, Gawatalina partnership with uh, support by uh, the uh, mayor, uh, who is very close to Father Ben and to uh, Mark. Okay, is one of your champions. Uh, where you have uh, Gawad Kalinga and Seed uh, also uh, also taking root. So Alvin, maybe yeah. your turn for the I last few. Yes. Uh, so again, uh, it's another productive and engaging and inspiring uh, morning. So thank you very much, Mark and Vanessa. So we have very common interests and advocacies. Uh, this is what we have been uh, trying to do here in this uh, uh, Philippine Innovation uh, Fireside Chats uh, series that we do every Friday. And I hope we can all catalyze our efforts towards uh, uh, you know, building a more uh, resilient and progressive you know, Philippines anchored at the ground, on the ground. This is really what we really want, now, you know, always on the ground. And I think you are uh, really the, the, uh, one of those uh, you know, examples of really uh, implementing uh, your projects that really makes a lot of difference for our people. And thank you, Vanessa, for, for helping us from your uh, Taiwanese technology. I have a lot of empathy to Taiwan because my son is studying there and I, I travel a lot to, to Taiwan. I hope I have a, an opportunity to visit you in, in Kaohsiung in, you know, soon. So again, thank you very much, Mark and Vanessa and Giselle. And to our, of course, uh, uh, participants every Friday morning and I know every time we have uh, you know we are increasing in numbers and I hope because this could be passed on the information the knowledge and everything so we can really sabi pa nga ni Giselle uh, you know the uh, multiplier effect will be much more and the impact will be greater so thank you very much uh, uh, to Paase our president uh, Mario Santo Domingo and our Vice President Gladys Completo. 
we, uh, we this is uh, you know part of the paases uh, advocacy to to really reach uh, you know a greater number of people uh, in terms of uh, discourses intellectual discourses on on matters that relates to innovation so thank you very much feb uh, slares thank you uh, so much uh, you are behind this kindly show our uh, last uh, uh, slides for our announcement for the next uh, series. Yes, and Alvin from your Kababayan, from Evsu, from Annalyn, thank you, Pase, for firing us up with this magnificent platform. So talagang sana magkaroon ng multiplier effect. Okay, uh, thank you to the speakers. Uh, from uh, Mark, uh, thank you for this opportunity to share our story. Looking forward to collaborating with many of you. Maraming salamat, Mark. Thank you so much, Van, Vanessa. So at this point, I'd like to uh, just uh, remind everyone of our uh, continuing series. And uh, next time, uh, next Friday, we will have uh, our speaker from De La Salle University this time. And he's an academician of the National Academy of Science and Technology. And he's one of our local leaders in robotics. And his uh, application for uh, the automated machines that he makes is principally in agriculture. So talagang ang focus talaga ng paase then is agricultura because we know this is the most important um, uh, technology that our um, communities need for them to uh, combat poverty, hunger, and malnutrition. All right, so Feb, at this point, can you just flash uh, these uh, documents? As um, Alvin mentioned earlier, I would have to uh, remind us that um, the government, the national government, is uh, determined to uh, get uh, the innovation platforms uh, shared with all regions of the country. But for that, we need to know what you think are the barriers to innovation and the proposed solutions. This afternoon, a private company that was commissioned by NEDA is holding a uh, a meeting and uh, invited us executive members to attend. But also, we are going to formulate um, some guidelines on how to spend the innovation fund sometime next week. So soon, I think that um, we might uh, be able to announce uh, the new uh, guidelines for uh, the innovation grant proposals for 2024. Finally, everyone is welcome to uh, submit a paper to PASE or uh, to another uh, group on what uh, we think uh, would be critical for uh, fostering Philippine s and innovation. So with that, uh, I'd like to thank everyone again on behalf of Alvin. By the way, Alvin just uh, won or was acknowledged with a very um, prestigious uh, lectureship award in a university in Taiwan. Congratulations, Alvin. Okay, so thank you so much, everyone, and uh, good day, uh, good evening. <laughs> thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you, Vanessa. Mark, again, okay. thank you. Yes. Vanessa, thank you thank so you. much, everyone. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Till next Friday. Bye-bye. Thank you. Giselle, thank you very much. I hope. Yeah, he's okay. <laughs> There's always emergencies as one gets older, you know, and family. So just had to deal with it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Left already. Okay. Giselle. Vanessa, uh, regards to Annaline, Annaline, you may contact uh, Vanessa also because if you intend to, to visit Taiwan and look at their technology there, you can also uh, do that. So you do a lot of uh, uh, you know agricultural uh, in, uh, innovations there in late there. So thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So okay. you know uh, if uh, Vanessa is still around, Vanessa, mm -hmm. uh, yes. at this, I have to go a now. Group, yeah, a group from uh, Central Mindanao University. There, the president and high officials, and they met with uh, KMU, uh, uh -huh. Doctor Aaron. Uh, because they want to develop some um, some uh, plant, uh, you know, want to 